Imagine a new kind of money that helps fight poverty. That is exactly what Glow Dollar is about. Glow Dollar is a stable coin that generates basic income for people in extreme poverty. It's always worth one US dollar and it's backed by reserve. The goal is to end poverty by providing basic income to those in need. For this episode, we spoke to Jeff, co-founder and CEO, and Jasper, co-founder and CMO of Glow Dollar. They dove into the reasoning behind the concept, why it's different from other poverty fighting initiatives, and what the future holds for the project. Welcome to the Blockchain Hustler, your exclusive VIP pass to the world of Web3. On this show, we delve deep and get up close and personal with the most pioneering founders, leaders, celebrities, disruptors, and creators who are shaping the future of blockchain and cryptocurrency. My name is Julieta Ose, and I'm your host. I hope you're enjoying this episode as much as I did. Let us know your feedback in the comments below. So Jeff and Jasper, Glow is named as the anti-poverty version of the dollar. What inspired you to create such a project? And how did you come up with the idea of using it to address poverty? Yeah, thanks for having us here. Really appreciate it. The initial idea was started a couple summers ago. Um, I met Sid Sabrandi. He's the co-founder and CEO of GitLab. Uh, he had some ideas around using crypto for basic income. And he was inspired by a donation to give directly and saw the impact of cash transfers, helping people out at the very poorest parts of the world, like extreme poverty level. I have an academic background. I was teaching economics. I taught an international development economics course. And I think the at the extreme poverty level of income, I see the value of basic income. And I think it's a really important tool and solution to help lift people out of extreme poverty on the like theoretical side. I think capital formation, those type of ideas is really, really important and expanding access to education and all those things. So I was really motivated by these ideas. I joined as CEO to help start it and hired uh, Jasper and Harm as the first two people to join as co-founders. And we're up to 15 people as a team and, and looking to launch and, and scale this thing. So it's it's been a great journey, but uh, I really feel passionate about the solution we're building to help really solve a big problem in the world. Wow, that's very, very impressive. Jasper, do you have anything to add for that? Yeah, I, I wanted to add. So so we're definitely not the only ones that are um uh are 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 trying to you know improve the situation of extreme poverty. Um in fact as as Jeff mentioned, um the original idea here came from when Sid, our 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 first funder, made a donation to Give Directly. Give Directly is an NGO, we'll probably talk about more, but you know, they have been doing direct cash transfers for almost 10 years now to people in extreme poverty. And they're doing great. So, you know, that organization is growing very fast and um, uh, reaching more people every year. Um, what Sid realized was he, he donated $10 million, um, which he felt very good about because he knew that, you know, the majority of those $10 million would end up directly to, with people. That's the whole idea of Gift Directly. But it also made him wonder, like, how much more would we need to help everyone in extreme poverty? Like, what, what, how, how far does that $10 million donation that I made, how far does that get us? And he realized that um, the problem is so, so big that if you wanted to give everyone in extreme poverty a basic income, you would need somewhere north over like three hundred billion dollars per year, and um, you know, compared to that, ten million dollars is, is a drop in the ocean. In fact, getting to three hundred billion dollars right. in donations at all is going to be very challenging. Like then you're almost talking about like absorbing pretty much all of the donations that everyone is making over the whole world to to other countries. So uh, he realized like, okay, giving basic incomes to people in extreme poverty really seems to work well. And, and that is very optimistic. But to give away money, you need money to give away. And, and if that money to give away is only going to come from donations, then we're going to have a hard time. So we need to find another way to another source of funding, basically, to, to, to fund these basic incomes if we want to scale it up to, you know, the hundreds of millions of people that are still living in extreme poverty. And um, 
uh, that is um, that is where the, the the seed was planted for the idea of like okay maybe we can change something in our in how our our money works um, that um, uh, that unlocks that source of funding. Understood. Okay, so I mean, you've covered a little bit on how it differs from other poverty fighting um, initiatives, but is there anything else you'd like to add on on that on that side? How does it differ? What's different about you guys? Well, I think like poverty is a very complicated problem. Obviously, extreme extreme poverty specifically. Maybe we want to we want to define it first. So you know. Poverty is a very broad term, but extreme poverty is defined as practically like the, the worst kind of poverty we have on earth. It means that you are surviving on less than $2.15 per day. Um, and uh, I think about 700 million people right now uh, on earth live in extreme poverty. I think broadly there are wow. three things you can do to improve. One is you can have economic growth. So, for instance, in China, a lot of people have been lifted out of extreme poverty over the last decades because the country was just growing by itself. So that is one one way you can you can you can address that problem. The other category would be the second category would be uh, you give people very specific things, like you give them education, or you give them food, or you give them uh, specific types of medicine. Um, and, and, and that kind of intervention stems from the idea that you as the giver know best what the recipient would need. So you're going to give them just that in the way that you think is best. Mm -hmm. The third type, and that is what we're doing is flipping that around and saying, okay, but probably what someone needs depends on. The, the village that they're living in, the country that they're living in, and even within a village, like from family to family, people have different needs and different opportunities as well. So instead of us, the giver, like deciding for them, like, hey, this is what you need, why not just give them money? Because most probably, like, they know what they need. Uh, they they feel what they need every single day. And one family might want to, you know, buy education for their children, send them to school uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a town nearby. The other village might want to, you know, collect money and, and get a water pump closer to the village. Um, so if you just give money, then, you know, they'll probably be able to get their own lives to the next step. And then let's be honest, right? They're still living in poverty, but it allows them to get to that next step. And um, I think that is the, um, that is the magic of, 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 of basic incomes. And now what Glow is doing, <laughs> so that's where we come in. Um, Glow allows anyone to contribute to these basic incomes um, without having to donate. So that, that sounds too good to be true. It sounds like, like, like magic. So I'm, I'm sure we'll get into the exact specifics. But normally when you do, you, when you do a charitable act, it, it, it usually starts with donating money, giving money away. Um, uh, and, and we're creating a new form of philanthropy where you can keep your money, but you're still making a financial contribution to someone's basic income and extreme poverty. Okay. Okay. All right. So give me a bit more of the, let's say exact specifics. What is GLOW? And let's try talk about it as if you're trying to explain this to your grandmother. So if it's someone who's not, you know, in the crypto bubble just yet, how would you explain this to them? I'll, I'll start with just kind of adding to that. We're thinking of ourselves, and this is a little cliche, but the Patagonia of money. So when we say you can help solve extreme poverty and, you know, support our mission, it's you're not actually donating dollars. You're using a different form of money. So we'll talk about the actual like technical implementation, but it is a, a different form of money and it's tied to the US dollar. So think of it as one to one to the US dollar. And it's kind of like, you know, you put money into a bank account and now you have deposits that you can spend. Putting money into Glow, you'll have Glow dollars to spend worth the same amount. 
and the backing and how we support it and the infrastructure behind it, you know, we have a collateral reserve that supports its value. We invest those reserves in very safe U.S. treasuries that produces an income stream through the interest on those reserves. And we donate all that money to the social mission, which is basic income programs for extreme poverty. So I just, it's just money. It's not a, don't have to think of it as like a crazy cryptocurrency. <laughs> uh, the way it's supported and the, the structure behind it is, um, you know, we think it's a very trusted form of money in that form. Yeah, maybe maybe if I if I really would try to explain to 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 my my grandparents, I would say, you know, as you know, you can have money in different forms. So you can you can go to an ATM, get it in cash, and put it under your mattress. And then if if you do that, then uh, you own the money, and 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 no one else is doing anything with that money. No one else is making money off of your money. Or you can put it on a bank account, and if you put it on a bank account, you know, you still own the same amount of money. Let's say it's a thousand dollars. First it was cash, you had a thousand dollars. Now it's on a bank account. you still have a thousand dollars, but your bank is actually making money off of your money right now. You don't lose any money. You still keep a thousand dollars, but you know, on the back end, they are investing your money uh, and they're getting a return on that. And you know, whenever you want to go to the ATM and withdraw, they'll give you your money. But in the meantime, they were making a little bit of profit off of your money. Um, and now Glow is a third option where you know you can have it as cash, you can have it on a bank account, or you can have it in a form of Glow dollars. If you do the third thing, then it's not that the bank is making money, but it is that people in extreme poverty are making money off of your money even though you still own a thousand dollars. So you're not losing any money, but someone in extreme poverty is, is getting a little bit of money because of you. Uh, for as long as you keep your money, for as long as you keep your thousand dollars as glow dollars. Uh, do you think my, my grandparents would, uh, would understand that? I think so. I think so. You'll have to try it out, I guess. <laughs> yeah. The comparison to banks is, uh, you know, that's a fractional reserve banking system. We're a hundred percent reserve, like you deposit a hundred percent reserve supported. So if, if people understand how the banking system works and how loans get created from your deposits, um, think of us just hundred percent reserve system versus a fractional reserve system. Awesome. I think you both have explained that really, really well. Um, okay. So take me through some of your short-term milestones. What kind of impact do you hope to make with Glow? Yeah, so we're currently working towards um, getting our platform ready for Glow to launch and be available to the public. Uh, it'll initially, it'll, it will initially be available on decentralized exchanges like Uniswap and Quis Quicksop. There's no, anybody can just provide a liquidity pair um, and um, offer Glow that's owned to the marketplace through the decentralized um, uh, ecosystem. So that's that's our focus right now is getting launched, growing the early market cap, making sure people have access to it, and uh, really promoting and letting people know about uh, the stablecoin. What, what, what's, you know, if, if you're already out there in the crypto ecosystem, if you're part of a DAO, DAOs hold treasury assets. A lot of them, those are in stablecoins. Um, so we want to like talk to people there and see if they want to convert some of their current treasury holdings into our stablecoin because it's, the same exact form. It's just a different type of underlying mission and, and income stream that uh, we're going to support. But um, yeah, I think it's it's all about focusing on getting it into the marketplace right now and really creating a lot of attention. So things like this interview is, is a huge benefit to us. Yeah, and I think we're specifically looking for the kind of people who are early adopters because okay. what we envision is 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 a future in which uh, buying the glow dollar and using the glow dollar is very easy. You can you can maybe even receive your salary in a glow dollar. You can you can do your groceries with the glow dollar. Um, uh, basically, anything you do with money in your daily life, you can do it in a glow dollar. And if if we reach that point, the beauty of glow is that um, 
the, 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 the more our adoption grows, the more people use Glow, the more people get lifted out of extreme poverty. So that's really, that's really like once we're alive, the only thing we have to do basically is grow adoption. Um, and as more money, as more people convert more money to Glow, people get lifted out of extreme poverty. And, 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 and our vision is that you can, you can use Glow anywhere in your, in your daily life, basically. But that will take a while because, you know, as we, as we launch, there's no, there's no shop that will accept Glow for payments. Uh, you, your landlord probably won't accept Glow dollars for your rent. Um, uh, if, if you go to your, to your boss and say, Hey, I, I want my next paycheck in Glow, they'll probably say no, or they'll say, what, what even is that? Um, so that, so that future will take a while. Um, so we're really looking for the set of people who sort of like get where we're trying to go and say, okay, yeah, I, I really like this vision. Uh, I want to support this. And the way to support that is by already starting to adopt a little bit of glow, even though it's not the most useful currency yet. Um, if you help us out in that way, we can then show like, hey, there is a growing movement here. There is a seed of adoption. Um, um, and that will help us really like take the next steps and partner with payment processors and card companies and payroll companies and DeFi platforms and all of these things we need to do to make Glow an increasingly easy to use and, and available uh, currency to really like get to that mass adoption. Okay, okay. So just to follow on from what you've just mentioned, Jasper, how do you plan to ensure that the distribution of Glow is fair? And how will you basically prevent it from being concentrated within the hands of a few individuals or entities? Yeah, I think great question because that is, of course, with a lot of cryptocurrencies, uh, a problem. Um, that somewhere in the beginning there was this unfair distribution or mining or whatever. Um, it might sound weird, but I think with, with a stablecoin, and Glow is a stablecoin, I think that's less of a problem because Glow, like people who use Glow, they're not going to profit off of it. So it's not like if you're first, then you know you're going to get most of the of the profits that that like that would have been the case with Bitcoin or Ethereum. But Glow is just going to, you know, if you buy a thousand dollars worth of Glow today, in a year from now, it won't be worth two thousand or something. Um. So, so to be honest, like, Got it. I would be fine, and I don't think this will happen. But let's say, for whatever reason, Glow will actually be uh, concentrated in the in the hands of a few very wealthy people. That's still adoption, and that still allows us to lift people out of extreme poverty. Like in in general, like I don't care where the adoption comes from. Um, if if we have a market cap of um, uh, of uh, you know, a uh, hundred, a uh, hundred million, for instance, um, we will be able to lift. Um, this is uh, math from the top of my mind, which is a little difficult. Um, let me pick a different number. <laughs> um, if we have a market cap of uh, uh, 1.8 billion, we'll be lifting a hundred thousand people out of extreme poverty. And and for all I care, like there's one person that is just buying $1.8 billion worth of Glow. We can still lift 100,000 people out of extreme poverty. Or it might be, you know, 1.8 million people all putting in like $100 or something. Uh, the result is the same number of people lifted out of extreme poverty. So I'm, I'm fine with, uh, with an unfair distribution in that sense. Yeah, there is no, there's no way to profit from like somebody putting in a billion dollars to buy Glow. The most I can take out is billion dollars. So like, it's not the problem with Bitcoin that we see as highly concentrated by early adopters because they're getting richer as the price increases. The stable coin is one to one and there's, yeah, there's no way you can profit from us and all collateral interest is given as basic income. So there's no even future path of earning interest from this, from us, the issuer. So absolutely. That's a fantastic USB you've got going there. So obviously Glow is a stable coin and as I'm sure you're aware, there's a lot of uh, iffiness with stable coins. How, um, yeah, how will you ensure that it remains strong and keeps its peg? Well, the, the first thing I like to highlight around, you know, 
keeping the peg is we'll be a hundred percent reserve backed and people have to, you know, trust us that we're not going to take risky bets with the assets. Well, I like to highlight that we're, we're a nonprofit. We, as leaders of the organization, decision makers in the organization early on, um, have no incentive to take additional risk because we're not becoming wealthy from that risk taking. Um, I look at, you know, for-profit companies that are building the same thing. Like, yeah, there is an incentive to maximize profits and you might want to find riskier assets using the, the deposited funds. We don't have that problem. We can be like, hey, we, the more interest we earn from the collateral, the more we can lift out of extreme poverty, but we don't have to take additional risk for any personal incentive or decision making. And I think that's really important as a differentiator in this space. Um, so that's fundamental. Uh, but yeah, we're doing a lot of different things for the trust and transparency of what we're building. And over time, it's going to build. But I think the nonprofit thing is one of the key points. Fantastic. Anything you'd like to add on there, Jasper? Or you think Jeff's covered that all? Well, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe to just clear up a misunderstanding that some people probably still have is that um, there are broadly two very different kinds of stable coins. And unfortunately for us, they're both called stable coins, even though they're really different. So the, the, I, I guess yeah. the, mo the most well-known stable coin is actually USD, Terra. Um, and that one blew up. And Terra was what's called an algorithmic stable coin. And the idea of an algorithmic stable coin is that through some intelligent scheme of uh, supply and demand and, um, uh, and, and arbitrage, you have uh, this, this magic system in which if it all goes well, you know, the, the, the collective actors on the trading market um, make, this, make this coin stay stable. Now, that is a beautiful ideal, um, but it has never worked yet. <laughs> Uh, and, 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 you know, everyone who, who tried that scheme, uh, uh, crashed so far. And, and that gave stable coins a really bad reputation. But there is also a, a different kinds of, 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 of stable coin, which is the, what people call the fully backed or the fiat backed stable coin or the reserve backed stable coin. And that is a very boring model where the only thing that you do is like you, you, you have on, on the one end, you have the stable coin. On the other hand, you have a company that is holding a big, bag of dollars and the company makes sure that for every one stable coin out there there's always a there's always a dollar in their in their bank account or in their reserve such that whenever someone using the stable coin wants to redeem it and get their real us dollar back they can just do that because they're they're all there is always one um and um a small nuance there is that it's not just literal dollars so it could also be very low risk government bonds, but these are so low risk that practically speaking, anytime you want to redeem your dollar, you can still get your, your dollar back. Now, the reason why this is a boring kind of stable coin is because it doesn't really fit the um, crypto ideal of decentralization because for this to work, you have to trust that one company. Um, so it, 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 it's not a very elegant solution from a conceptual point of view. But it is a, the only solution that has worked so far. And given that you trust this one company, it is actually a very trustworthy system because there's not much that could crash the value of the stablecoin. Because whatever happens to the stablecoin, you can always get your, your dollar back. And this is actually the most popular kind of stablecoin. So the ones you might know, so, so, so Tether's USDT and Circle's USDC, these are these boring kinds of stable coins and they have been doing just fine, even though the whole crypto market kind of crashed. Um, and Glow is a stable coin like that. Glow is also a boring kind of stable coin. So from the get go, there is a lot less to worry about than you might think if you, if you, if you just heard about the crashing stable coins, because th those were that other kind of stable coin. Sorry, I was going to say, I'm, I'm sure this is something that you, um, obviously like struggle with when obviously, like you said, you know, they're both called stable coins. When people come across Glow, they just probably associate it with the other stable coin. How are you looking to educate people 
um, with what Globe really is and with all the fantastic answers you've given me so far. Yeah, you're totally right. Like that is a struggle sometimes. And and in general, like we, we don't necessarily, like, yeah, we are, we are a crypto project, um, but the fact that we are a crypto project sometimes works against us because people might have all sorts of associations with crypto that is about fraud and scamming and gets rich quick schemes. And, you know, but by this point, they have been burned so, so often that um, they don't trust you by default. And then you have to win their trust uh, rather than the other way around. So that is a struggle. Um, you know, you, you talk about education and that's definitely a big part of it. So, you know, we'll just make sure to have content on our website that explains it in, in layman's terms. But I think perhaps more powerful than that is just, it's just showing that it works. Um, uh, I, I think for most people, that is probably how they'll actually come to trust us. Not because they read uh, a, a very clear article where we explain how it works. It's just like, we're just going to go out there. We're going to launch this thing. We're going to grow. We're going to make donations to Give Directly. Give Directly is going to be able to lift more people out of extreme poverty because of our growth. And then we actually have results. And then, you know, if we're like six months in, a year in, two years in, and people can just see that more and more and more people are using the Glow Dollar. And they're also more and more and more starting to use it in their daily lives. Um, and, 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 and as that happens, like more people get lifted out of poverty. I think that is probably what will, what will help most people trust us. Just us showing that we're doing the right things. Um, that, uh, we are secure. We are very transparent about that. Uh, and that people get in fact listed out of extreme poverty when you, when you use glow. Yeah. And the crypto association is something to think about. Like I almost like you rather using the, you know, we're block a blockchain form of the dollar. You know, crypto has this connotation of like speculative things. We're, we're not speculative at all. <laughs> and that's the thing. We're, we're utility using blockchain technology. And it's, it's something that I think, as we've talked to people early on, people have never, never touched crypto, are excited about our, our project and the mission, and they're seeking it out as early adopters. And that's a really important data point because it doesn't have to be the, the crypto people that get excited about it. It's like, oh yeah, you're just using this form of you know, technology and you're building a model on top of it, just like any other business model. And I think that's you know, getting people into that group the new people into crypto, if we want to use the term crypto. And that's, I think, going to help change the narrative for the whole ecosystem. And that's really important, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I totally agree there. Okay, so can you talk to me about any potential partnerships or collaborations that you're pursuing and how they may help um, advance the mission of GLOW? I think the first one to mention is, you know, we're going to be launching on Polygon early. And Jasper, maybe you want to talk about the kind of ideas around uh, working with Polygon. I know I'm personally going to be on a panel during ETH Denver uh, with Impact Impact Plus, and they have a relationship with Polygon. And uh, we're going to be talking about social impact using blockchain. So those are really important early partnerships to help spread the word and you know, again, change the narrative. How are we using blockchain? How are we using this crypto kind of ecosystem to do socially beneficial beneficial things? So I'm excited about that. And I think that's a really, you know, Polygon in the crypto space is a big name and people are trusting it as a uh, fundamental blockchain in the space. So I'm happy about that. And maybe ask where you want to talk about some of the activities involved with that. Yeah, well, I, I think th that, is a, that is a great one to, to highlight like in a, in a very short term. Um, I think a bit more medium to long term, we're really looking to partner with pretty much any party who currently makes up the, uh, the way that payments work. Um, so for instance, and, and, and this is speculative, right? It's like, uh, this is not a, a partnership we're actually talking about, but this is on our wish list. Um, for instance, uh, Re Revolut uh, is now uh, going to offer a, uh, a debit card to some of their customers. 
where the debit cards is actually backed by crypto that they're holding, which means that you can actually go to a grocery st store and 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 pay for your milk as they as they uh, phrased it in, in their press release. Pay for your milk with Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever, and 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 how that works is like you you own that Bitcoin on Revolut. You use a Revolut card uh, when you when you are at the counter, and then uh, the shop obviously doesn't necessarily want Bitcoin, but Revolut then so like under the hoods, when you pay converts your Bitcoin to uh, British pounds in this case, um, and then in in effect for you the user you're still like living your life on Bitcoin, like you you have replaced your your checking account with a Bitcoin balance, so practically speaking you're 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 paying them in Bitcoin. Now, what would happen if that would be Glow is that you can, like w whatever balance you have on average on your, on your bank account, um, if that is the Glow dollar, then you're lifting people out of extreme poverty without you even changing any part of your life. Um, it's, it, is, it is, you know, that, that money is, is, is sort of like collecting dust on your checking account. Until you spend it, you're not going. You're not going to get any savings interest on it. Um, so might as well have that as glow dollars, because then, until the moment you spend it, someone else is living in poverty is 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 is, is having uh, uh, you know a little bit of a of a higher basic income because of you. Um, and and those kinds of things, like really like integrating with the broader world of how 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 money moves through our our society, I would, I would say, that is not going to do. That's not going to be something we are gonna, we're gonna reinvent. Like we're not, we're not the kind of crypto project that is saying, um, you know, there's the old system and now there's the new system, and we're gonna, we're gonna build up everything from scratch. No, our idea is that we have this, 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 this other version of the dollar. If you use this one, you're lifting people out of extreme poverty. And now we want, we want the the normal world to integrate with that more philanthropic dollar um, um, uh, such that uh, uh, yeah, more and more people can use it in their, in their daily lives. I think that will be increasingly the kind of partnerships we're looking to, uh, to pursue. Awesome. I'm sure you'll have a lot coming your way in the near future. So I think the question on everyone's lips is how will you ensure the security of GLOW and how will you protect it from any potential hacks or other security threats? Yeah, so very practically, uh, I was just going to mention, like we're doing uh, security audits on the actual token implementation. We're using companies like HackerOne and Immunify for uh, penetration testing and um, Making sure all our systems are secure, so it's it's we're going through the correct steps there. But also on like the financial side, like we want to be audited by a big four. We want to have all the controls and processes processes in place that a large trusted organization would have in place. So like go over and above what a startup would do, and I think that's really important because we want to have as much transparency and not just you know check the box with an audit, but like go through every internal control, make sure we're following the rules and, and being as professional of an organization as possible. And we've started that from day one. And that's the goal is to make sure people understand we're taking this very serious in terms of if we're handling money, um, we're not going to cut corners, do anything that would create additional risk around just the enterprise of, of handling money. Brilliant. Jasper, anything you want to add there? Well, perhaps I would like to add that we have the ambition to be ultra transparent about all of these things. So how are we secure? Well, it starts obviously by doing the right things, um, having the right checks and balances in place, making sure that the money all moves in responsible ways. But then we don't just do it, but we also show it. Um, and as much as possible, we, we show it completely. So. Um, and, and, and I'll be honest, like this is stuff that we're still working on. So this is not all in place from day one, but quite quickly, we want to, for instance, completely publish all of our 
policies on how we make updates to the smart contracts, um, when and how we uh, uh, buy uh, government bonds in the reserve, um, how we manage these, um, where the money is actually like located, like what, what banks are we on. Um, uh, we would like to just also as frequently as possible just update everyone on, hey, uh, right now we have this number of glow dollars outstanding and we're backing them one-on-one -on -one with uh, this amount of cash on this and this, these and these banks um, and uh, uh, these amounts of uh, short-term T-bills. Uh, and um, uh, we'll have to see, but, but, but ideally we just, we just publish that almost real time so everyone can always see what's happening and, li and like jeff said like that would still be trusting us on self-reporting so we also want a trusted uh big four accounting firm to actually um uh, stamp on these reports that we make and say yeah we we checked what they're saying and uh, it's true <laughs> um, they're really backing these low dollars absolutely got it great stuff so what's the dream you know, you spoke to me a bit about your short-term goals. What's the dream? What's the long-term vision? Where is Glow in 10 years' time? Well, the, the, the goal is extreme poverty. The, the numbers behind solving and like, alleviating and eliminating extreme poverty, um, they get pretty big. But we estimate you know, around 8% of money supply converted into Glow um, generates enough uh, interest every year to support basic income programs that lift everybody out, out of extreme poverty. So that's like the, the broad, big, huge, fun, um, kind of ambition to chase, uh, in the, in a, you know, the near term, getting launched, building this early adopter community, getting early partnerships that are going to really help scale and grow market cap. And that's really any place where you use money, which is a lot of places, but there's early, you know, I mentioned the DAOs, but exchanges use stable coins for trading. There's payment companies like Venmo that have started using cryptocurrencies. There's no reason why we can't fit into those ecosystems early on and, and really get exposure to this growth. But yeah, the North Star metric is market cap growth and adoption. And there's a lot of network effects around money. So that's going to be a big challenge. But at the same time, it's exciting to start jumping into it. But yeah, it's <laughs> big ambitions. You've got to aim high. You've got to aim high. <laughs> Jasper, anything you wanted to throw in there? No, that's it. Like our, 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 our goal is to give everyone an extreme poverty a basic income. And we estimate that if Glow replaces 8% of all the money in the world, that we will in fact be able to give everyone extreme poverty a basic income. So yeah, we're going to try to replace 8% of all the money in the world with Glow dollars. Great stuff. What an awesome project. It's really inspired me listening to both of you speak. It's honestly been such an honor, Jeff and Jasper. Is there anything else you would like to throw out before we wrap up the interview? Yeah, I think the most important thing is that if you're listening to this and you are excited, then probably your default reaction is like, oh, that's cool. Um, I'm excited to see where this project will go. Um, I'll check them out in a couple of months or so. Uh, now that is uh, awesome. Uh, and we'll also have uh, our supporters at the sidelines, but even better would be if you take that enthusiasm and actually help us out a little bit. Um, so like I said, like the, the, the only, the only thing really about glow is that as our adoption grows, we lift more people out of extreme poverty. And our goal is mass adoption, but it has to start somewhere. Um, perhaps you know this classic internet video where um, uh, you see um, people chilling on a hill and then one person start, starts dancing. Uh, and then first he seems crazy and then a second person joins him. And then a couple minutes later, like the whole, like everyone on the hill is dancing. Um, like I think growing ad adoption for Glow is kind of like that. Like if if you're one of the first to to adopt Glow, like people around you won't understand it probably. And if they understand it, they're like, you know, why are you uh, why are you doing this weird crypto thing that that you cannot even profit off of? Um, 
Uh, but we, we need we need to have a couple of, of these people that are like, okay, I'm going to be the first person dancing. Um, and then, you know, because they do that, hopefully there's like a second person that's like, oh, huh, that's interesting. I might want to join. Um, so, yeah, if you're listening to this, if you're excited, um, actually consider like doing that. And, um, and, and uh, get the ball rolling. Get the ball rolling, exactly. Absolutely. So everyone can, everyone watching this can sign up to the waitlist by visiting www.globedollar.org forward slash blockster. And where can everyone find you? Are you on Twitter, LinkedIn? Is there any other links you would like to throw out there? Yeah, it's uh, simple. It's uh, Twitter is at glowdollar, G L O dollar. Um, website, glowdollar.org. LinkedIn. I think it's something like slash company slash glow dollar. Um, in general, glow dollar. We'll make sure everything's linked at the bottom on the, uh, the video. Jeff and Jasper, thank you so much. It really has been an honor. It's been so lovely to hear more about the, the project. And I think I will be looking into it a little bit further. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you.